Hey everyone, it's been a while, but I'm back with the next update to the copper wiring data pack, and this is update beta 4, Electric Hazards. And in case you're wondering why I'm including beta in the name, I decided to change the names of my updates to reflect the development state they're in, which is definitely more of a beta than full releases, with the plan of eventually having a full release that's not beta. So right now we're on beta update 4, or as far as the full version goes, it's 0.4.0. .0. And this update, along with other things, pertains to this bad boy right here, which I'll be saving for the last, so we'll just get through the rest of the stuff first. And quite a lot we do have to get over. A lot of these changes have to do with reverting and changing things from the previous update, because you guys let me know that things were not really in the best state. I think that also definitely reflects why this is called beta now, because I'm changing a lot of things that I introduced before. So let's get into it. First of all, the whole lever thing with deactivating blocks that have to do with copper wiring has been changed to just a power source of any kind. So whether it's a lever powered on or a pressure plate or a button, it will now deactivate uh, these copper wires instead of having a lever turned off to it. I'll admit that was weird, but yeah, this should make a lot more sense. They work kind of like hoppers where if they're powered by redstone signal strength of 15 in this case, then they will not send power through. Along with that, I changed how the bulbs work. So the regular copper bulb with no oxidation works exactly the same. And so does the exposed bulb where it has to be lit and powered to send power through. But on the flip side, I changed these other two. So these two now are directional. If I have this powered, then you'll see that it powers uh, this wire right here, but not this one. And if I flick this lever, it'll power this one. So these are now directionally dependent, but will work uh, whether it's on or off. So as long as things are powered, it will send power through. And then oxidize is the same thing, but it just has to be on. So if I were to have this powered, as you can see, it doesn't go through, but if it is on, then it will go through. But those are just the bulbs. I've also changed the chiseled copper as well as the grates and the other blocks that are used in this data pack. So the chiseled copper, previously it had a delay that was incrementing by one. So the unoxidized would have a delay of one tick, then exposed would have two, weathered would have three, and oxidized would have four. But now this has been made exponential. If I go ahead and flick this lever, you can see that the delay is much longer on the oxidized and weathered variants. And I figured that was good for uh, making a chain of these if you want to uh, have a custom amount of delay. That way you can have it down to the exact tick and you can also increment it in bigger numbers if you want to. Now, as this relates to copper grates, these have been changed to be exponential as well, and the order has been reversed. So the quickest charge time will be with the unoxidized version, which is eight seconds. Then the exposed will have 16, followed by the weathered at 32, and the oxidized copper grate will have 64 seconds. This is assuming, of course, one input. So if I give this lever a flick here, you'll see that this one fills up the fastest, and I actually changed the color as well to make it a little more visually distinct. But if I were to make this uh, not lit up, I think this looks really cool. It's like some violet electric look to it. Now I changed the behavior of these once again to uh, fix a glitch that was actually in version three, where the powered state of the wires coming out would constantly flicker when it gets low due to it filling up and then draining very quickly. So how it's been fixed is now when it is fully charged, it will actually drain. But once the charge level gets below the amount of outputs, it'll actually fill all the way back up before it drains once again. Now this allows these timing mechanisms that were previously uh, reserved for the using the lever to actually be intrinsically part of the capacitors. But for example, if you don't quite drain it all the way, then you can continue draining it. It doesn't have to fill back up. It's just if the amount of power uh, gets under the amount of outputs. And if you're wondering for the sake of parity, if you do power these blocks by redstone, then power will not go through. Not if it's full, not if it's empty, not like before, just the same as everything else. Anyways though, moving on from that, we've got a change to the copper and cut copper. So previously, if you had an unoxidized copper block, it would take uh, one input to equal one output. Then with the exposed, it would be two inputs to one output then three and then four. So that's been changed to be multiplicative. And this is also exponential. The regular copper is still one. The exposed copper is still two, as you can see, but the weathered copper will actually be four and the oxidized copper will be eight. And this is true, of course, for the cut copper as well. Now, of course, the big question right now is why would we have one with a resistance level of eight? Because you can only have at the most five inputs and one output or six inputs and no outputs. Well, not to worry, I thought of that and that's actually an intentional feature because now lightning bolts have a new mechanic where they supercharge wires and you can tell they are supercharged by the little sparks emanating from them on the sides and these supercharged wires will actually carry 16 times the amount of voltage that is in a regular wire. And so this allows you to do some cool stuff. For example, if I had some oxidized copper, normally this has a 
resistance of eight. So that means we can have two powered outputs. Of course, if we have a third one, as you can see, it won't work. But then if we have the weathered copper, for instance, we can actually have up to four outputs with the lightning charge. And similarly, if you use copper grates, then it'll actually charge them very fast. Keep in mind, this is the slowest charging copper grate, and we can fill it up in about four lightning strikes. Now, as far as a promise I made from the previous update, the wire insulation has been worked on. So now this is actually a right click function. And I decided to make this a little more survival friendly. So you can actually use clay balls to create this wire insulation. If you right click it without crouching, then it'll place this little clay thing around it. And you can dye this easily just by using some dye. And yes, I know this is concrete, not terracotta, which is what clay would dye to. But I'm going to be honest, terracotta is, um, what's a nice way to put it? not pretty. So for the sake of visuals, I just decided to use concrete. That's just my own choice. Now, another thing you can do with this insulation that is not from the previous update is you can actually right click it with a glow ink sack to make the insulation glow in the dark. So if I turn off these lights here, then maybe it's a little easier to see, but yeah, that is glowing. It's really nice. If I just uh, have a one that's not glowing next to it, you can tell there's clearly a difference here. And if you want to remove insulation at any time, all you have to do is right click it with the shears and it'll take it off. Now keep in mind you don't get your clay back, but since this costs just one clay ball instead of a full block, I figured that was a bit more fair. And like I said, if you're crouching, it won't actually place them. So if you don't want to accidentally place them, then just crouch. Now due to this being a data pack, one thing I want to let you know is that the hitboxes for the interaction is going to be a bit weird. So if I turn on hitboxes here, you can see the up and down works great, but the sideways takes up the entire block. Meaning that if there's a copper wire, under another copper wire, then you'll end up right clicking the first one, even if you're looking at the second one. So just keep that in mind. I'm sure there's a solution to it, but I wanted to get this update out sooner. So if there is one, I might include it in the next update, but for now, this is how it works. Now, one more thing about the insulation is that there actually was kind of a missed point with the previous update. And that is that if I do a weather thunder, then as you can see, regular wires will actually spark when they can attract lightning. So in just a second here, you'll see this thing start to spark. That was still true for insulated wires. So that's been changed. They now don't spark. There's no way for them to attract lightning, which, you know, is intentional. It was just a missed thing that I didn't realize I needed to do in the previous update. Now, as far as the final feature, the moment you guys have all been waiting for, we've got a Tesla tower, and this allows you to shock nearby targets using a heavy core. I decided to reincorporate the heavy core. If you were here for the original release of the data pack, this was used as the capacitor and it was way too expensive, but I think its new use is gonna justify the cost. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on and let the sound effects play. Yeah, I think I did pretty well with the sound effects. That being said, the lightning shocks themselves don't have any. There weren't really any good ones I could find. Maybe I'll have to find one in the next update or something, but all the sound effects I could think of didn't really work out. So that's why this doesn't make any discharge sounds. And if you turn this off, it does the same thing, but backwards. Yeah, really cool. And of course, as you can see, they've also got this little purple thing in the middle that uh, just indicates that it's on. And when it's on and there are no targets around it, it'll actually just randomly send lightning out. This lightning has pathfinding for every single particle you see, so it's actually a random path every single time. And I'm not getting shocked by lightning because I'm not touching the ground. Since I'm not grounded, the lightning will actually not go to me. But if I hit the ground, you can see that it actually tries and shocks me. Of course, I'm in creative mode. If I were to go to survival, this will actually deal damage. And it won't always deal damage. If the lightning can't actually reach you, if it just falls short slightly, as you can see, it doesn't actually deal damage to you. Now the radius on this thing for attracting two entities is going to be five blocks. So if I stand a little too far away, it won't attract to me. But if I stand just a little closer, as you can see, sometimes it'll go for me. And generally the closer you are, the more often it will hit you. Now in case targets of the Tesla core, which is what this is called, are the same distance away, which is best represented with copper wires themselves, it will randomly select one each time. Though if there is one closer, generally it will go for that one first, just because it's easier to pathfind to. And of course, as you can see, these actually send power. So if I go ahead and just have this one shocked, it'll actually send power out and you can use this to power things and synchronize them and give pulses and all that. But it doesn't end there. As you can see, like I said before, if I'm in the air, it doesn't attract to me. Now, if I'm wearing leather boots, that will make it so I'm not actually grounded because I'm not connected to the ground and it will ignore me as well. Now, currently this is just for every leather armor, not just boots, but I might change that. I might not, I don't know. However, another realistic thing is that if you use chainmail, iron or gold armor, then it will attract to you. However, it won't actually deal damage because the path of least resistance to the ground is through your armor, not through you. Yeah, so I have, as the cool kids would say, been cooking. 
Now, as I said, this only does go after one target at a time. However, I do have plans in the future to allow a capacitor to go under the Tesla core, and that'll allow it to shock as many targets as in the distance, as long as it has the power to do so. I just wanted to uh, release this basic feature so you guys could try it out and see what you think. And if there are any adjustments I have to make, then I'll make them along with rolling it into the next update, kind of like I did with the wire installation. Now, something that does exist in the data pack currently is that if this is in water, it'll actually just damage all entities around it in a radius of two and a half blocks. So it sort of just disperses the energy around it. So that could be pretty useful. And it uses the same mechanic as the wires being underwater. So, you know, you have to be in a waterlogged block or water itself in order to take damage. But yeah, that is update beta 4 for copper wiring, and it is live now, so you can go ahead and download it on ModRinth or Planet Minecraft. And if you like this update, be sure to let me know with the likes and the comments. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.